Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here with a dream, not a dream, um, a testimony from one of our viewers, one of our long-term viewers. She goes by the name Believe. I want you to hear this. This is long. Um, it deals with witchcraft, the, the, the abominations that God detests, and she even titles it. So I'm going to read it to you, and you know how I do when I flow. I will read it. I may interject a word or two here or there to make it flow better. I may take a word out and change it for another word. But when I get through, I will finish with Pat's Two Cents. So listen to this. Only the Lord knows the future, not your horoscope. I started out many years ago reading my horoscope, as many people do, thinking it was an innocent type of fun. And yet it was fascinating because it seemed to always ring some truth. Well, that became a magnetic pull for me. Also, at the time, I was married to a man who had a drinking problem and an ex-wife who I was very jealous of. Because of my insecurity of the ex-wife, I began going to psychics and also calling those 800 numbers to speak to psychics so I can find out what my husband was doing behind my back. Well, long story short, I spent hundreds of dollars to see psychics and even had my phone account shut off because the bill was over $1,000. That's how addicted I became to wanting to know the future and what was going on behind my back. When I no longer had the money to go see the psychics, who, by the way, have schemes to keep you coming back, and make you spend more. <laughs> I began to delve into tarot cards, spell books, and I was digging deeper into horoscope understanding. I began to start buying books on these subjects and was very fascinated with them. There were not, things were not getting any better in my household. My husband was still the alcoholic, emotionally abusing me and my children. Our home was in chaos. Bills were outstanding and just negativity all around us. Although there were things going on around me that were falling apart, I just focused on reading the books and learning more about tarot card reading and practicing and practicing. Well, soon I was really good at it. Friends and family were coming to see me and asking me to read their futures. And most of the time, things would occur as the cards had predicted. Well, one day, a young man, a young friend of my daughter's, came to our home. He asked me to read his future. I laid the tarot cards out and it showed that a male figure had a problem with him and would try to harm him. Mm -hmm. Not even 10 minutes later, all, all of that played out before my very eyes in my own home. This young man went to put his arms around my German shepherd dog who happened to be male. Mm -hmm. who never hurt anyone before. This dog, he immediately attacked this young man and bit him in the face. Well, the young man had to be rushed to the hospital and needed stitches, and I found myself involved in a lawsuit because of it. Another incident involving a small horoscope book and my purse. My purse was in my kitchen on a chair. Out of nowhere, my purse was stolen with my recently cashed paycheck. We all began having dreams and experiences in the home that were uncomfortable. And our home was robbed again. But it was difficult to understand how it happened 
when it was only the family in the household. And none of us would have stolen simple things like our own t-shirts and silly things like that. Anyway, one day, someone told me to go to a particular church. Well, I had not been going to any church, and I figured uh, I'd go and see what the big deal was. It was a very large church, and toward the end of the sermon, the preacher stood on the altar and said, There is someone in here who is doing witchcraft, and they need to come forward and repent. I thought to myself, wow, whoever that is should go up there and repent because the preacher seemed to be very serious, emphatic, and insistent. I looked around as others did, and no one was getting up. The preacher repeated. Well, still no one went up. He said he could not move forward until the person came up and repented. Then he began to explain in detail what witchcraft involved. It involved tarot cards, horoscopes, Ouija boards, anything that is detestable to the Lord. When I heard the breakdown, well, this is Pat's two cents, let me add. Incantations, levitations, it's a whole lot of good stuff like that, yeah, spells. Hexes, all of that. Okay, when I heard the breakdown, back to her, what she wrote. When I heard the breakdown of details, I walked up to the altar, and a woman explained to me that those things were disgusting to the Lord. I had no idea. I thought it was all just innocent fun. But then things began to make sense. The woman told me not to throw the books away, but to burn them and never, ever delve into that stuff again. Well, once I began to cleanse my house and, and my life of those things and fill that void with Jesus instead, things began to change. The change was amazing and so rewarding. I gained the strength to leave the man who was an alcoholic although I tried to help him for over seven years, and I began to see him for the leech he really was. My children began going to church and learning about Jesus. Things really became clearer and brighter. I must say that horoscopes are like a drug. Well, they were like a drug to me. They were an addiction because I was intrigued by them. But now I know better. I know that they can sometimes seem accurate because a lot of the information is coming from the spiritual realm. Demons, not from good sources. So I could tell people not to be fooled by what may seem like an innocent source of entertainment, as in horoscope, psychic, tarot cards, uh, tarot card readers, games that tell the future, Ouija boards, etc. The only source to know your future is Jesus Christ. The Bible is the only book that we should look for for answers. All the answers are in the Bible. And the Holy Spirit does speak to us. But only through our understanding and belief in the Son of Jesus Christ, God's Son. I have told many of my friends, stay away from horoscopes. Some think I'm just a fanatic, but it is not to be played with. God bless you, my friends. Pray and ask God to show you what you need to know. Thanks, Pat, for sharing this message your sister in Christ. And I'm going to give her initial, Sister C. This is from our, our viewer, our subscriber that goes by the name Believe. And I hope you took that to heart. There are so many things people do that they think is harmless. That's the big deal. Yeah, well, you open, this is Pat's two cents. 
you open spiritual doors. And when you open spiritual doors, you may find yourself dealing with demonic attacks that keep you paralyzed when you wake up, that stop you from being able to speak. You may deal with accidents that try to occur to you or your loved ones. You may deal with hearing things, hearing voices, having a barrage of demonic dreams, and being harassed by harassing spirits in your sleep. It, it really can get crazy. Your body can be attacked. The body of your child, you can get all kind of skin problems and lesions on your skin and all kind of stuff going on, breathing issues that never was there before because you opened the door. And listen, this is practical talk now. When someone knocks on your door, the only way they have a right to walk into your house is if you turn that knob and open the door. Whether it was locked or not, once you get to the point where you're opening the door, they have the right to walk in once you've invited them. It's easier for a robber to get their foot in the crack of the door, even if you have the chain connected, and they can bust that door in. So you cannot afford to even crack the door. You need to keep the dead bolt of the power of the Holy Spirit, keeping that door locked. You cannot unlock it. You can't turn the knob and open it. You can't peep through a crack with the chain on it. Spiritually speaking, you keep that door locked, shut tight, because you never know what you're opening the door to. That's your warning. Stay away from the demonic, from white magic, black magic, incantations, uh, the, um, uh, what do you call it? That gram, I can't think of the word. Pentagram. Stay away from all that mess. Let playing games like levitations. Stay away from that. You may think it's fun, trying to conjure up spirits and playing with mediums and all of that. What you are doing is opening your door wide to demonic activity in your life. Then when things start to go bump in the night and things start to go chaotic and cuckoo in your life, you cry out to the Lord. But you have given those demons a right to infiltrate your life. Keep that door shut. Don't play. And as my former pastor used to say, don't play, you won't have to pay. God bless you. And I hope you take heed to that warning. You hear me? Amen.